Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode and you join me here up at the allotment on what is a beautiful day and the first day that I've had off work for a long time. So I'm feeling really relaxed, really, really happy and just ready to have a good chat with you all. Now the sun is shining and it's really, really bright and just lately that's the way it has been, which is my favourite time of year. I can never be too warm. I'm one of those people that is frustratingly annoying in the hot weather in that I don't get too hot I'm just I just love it I think I should have been born in a much hotter climate but never mind but it's led me to think about today's episode because all I've se seem to have read lately is how much people are struggling in the heat at the moment and just the big do's and don'ts in the summer for the allotment. Okay, so I'm going to try and spend most of this episode not squinting. The sun is sort of behind me-ish, um, but we'll do our best. If I have to move, I have to move. But I just wanted to talk to you today about some of the big do's and don'ts on the allotment, mainly in the summertime. Um, and there's a few that I would say are big do's and some that I would say are big don'ts. So let's start with the positives. Let's talk about the do's on the allotment in the summer. So number one, please, 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 if you're going to come out and work in the hot temperatures in the summer, please always, always make sure you have adequate sun protection. I love the sun. I enjoy being out in the sun as much as possible but not without this bad boy, especially if my shoulders and my neck are uncovered. I, I'm, I'm quite fair skinned anyway. You wouldn't think I was someone that spent a lot of time in the sun, but always, always make sure you're protected using a high factor sun cream. So big do there for number one. Number two, as obvious as it sounds, when you're on the allotment, please, please stay hydrated. Now, I tend to drink water when I'm up at the allotment. Nothing else, really. I might occasionally have some squash or one of those vitamin-type drinks if I fancy something a bit fizzier, but generally something that will actually quench your thirst. Uh, we don't have electricity up here, else I'd be bringing ice creams up every time I came up to the allotment, but that's just not a possibility. So I just make sure I always have plenty of water on hand and make sure I always stay hydrated because even if you're only up here for sort of an hour, if you're working in it, the temperatures can get ridiculously warm. I know here in Norfolk today, it is over 30 degrees. It is roasting hot and you just, you can't be too careful. The same goes with when I talk about protection as in suntan lotion, make sure if you are gonna be working for long periods of time, you're wearing the proper clothing as well. Um, always make sure you put your hat on, mine's in the shed. Um, I've only just arrived though, um, so I haven't put it on yet. And try avoiding working, well this is going on to a don't, so maybe I'll save this one for a bit later. But for obvious reasons, try not to work at the height of the sun. So try avoiding the hours of 11 till sort of two o'clock. Make those your time to stay at home and do those jobs at home that you need to do. And yeah, try and stay away from the allotment at those times. But I'll go on to the don'ts in a little bit. Okay, number three, one of the big do's. We've just talked about us needing drinks and us being thirsty and staying hydrated. The same goes for your plants. Your plants and your crops aren't going to be at their best if you don't water them. So please do ensure that you look after your plants in the same way you look after yourself, given adequate water to drink so they can thrive as well. Number four. Make sure that you do always enjoy what you're doing up at the allotment. Always celebrate those small victories. Um, I've had a quick walk around and I planted all my squashes out not long ago. Sorry, I'm sat right by these flowers and the bumblebees are going mad. It was probably not the best place to sit, but never mind. Um, but they're really enjoying it. So the bulrage is obviously a, a real bee puller in. 
that and my rosea lavender but I'm not sure you can see that it's literally just off camera I think but the bees are all over that too but do enjoy the small moments on the allotment I was taking a walk around earlier today and I noticed that out of all the squashes I planted all the courgettes I planted they're not actually doing that great um the courgettes they'll be well away what a surprise um, but the others aren't doing so well. So even though it means I'm probably going to end up with a glut of courgettes again and end up with a million courgette lemon cakes, they're the small victories you've got to take. If it means I'm going to get less pumpkins in Halloween this year, that's okay. I can live with it. So do, do celebrate the small victories that you have on the allotment. Number five. I think it's number five. Are we up to number five? Must be the weather. It's doing me in. Do spend time relaxing on your allotment when you're here. Don't see it as a constant place where you have to work, 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 work. Take some time to sit back, enjoy the work that you've done and enjoy all the hard work and the effort you've put in and just sit back and relax. We like to do this in the evening time. So we come up to water in the evening and we'll just take the time to sit back and enjoy everything that we've done. Uh, mostly potatoes this year if I'm honest like I've said last week now I've recently announced I'm pregnant I am a lot more limited to what I can do on the allotment so there's just lots and lots and lots and lots of potatoes and um, I've got something really really funny to show you later in the don'ts from down the other end of the allotment which I'm sure is going to give you all a big giggle but um, yeah do sit back do enjoy all the hard work you've done and relish every moment that you've got. So now I suppose I should move on to the don'ts, which I don't really like to do actually, but there are some. Okay, so number one, I think we briefly talked about it before. So don't come up to the allotment in the middle of the day. If the weather is the way it is today, where it is stiflingly warm, do not come up to the allotment if you can help it we're between the hours of 11 and 3 try and keep your visits either early in the morning or later in the afternoon if you have no choice but to come up here just try and keep your stint short make sure you're obviously adequately protected with regards to suntan lotion you're wearing a hat and you're keeping yourself covered properly to save yourself from getting poorly dehydrated or getting sunstroke or something worse so yeah don't come up here in the middle of the day unless you absolutely have to. Number two, don't stress when things go wrong. I'm going to show you something in just a minute that's gone a bit wrong for me this year. So I <laughs> planted out all my peas, my beans, my onions, and you will have seen it in the video when I did that, and it was beautiful. And I'm just gonna see if I can find a little photo for you to see. Um, but oh my God, it was beautiful. And it was all cleared and onions looked amazing. And I'd built all these structures and all these lovely things basically for my, for my structures this year. And then I moved on to the next bit of the allotment and then the next bit of the allotment and the next bit of the allotment. And then before you know it, the weeds have taken over completely. So it looks really, really awful um, to the point where I don't actually think I can now weed it. It's that bad. They are like up to my chest, the height of them. It's shocking. I'm going to show you. I don't want to show you, but I'll show you because it's actually more um, comedy value than anything else. So whether there's any onions left under there, it's unlikely. But I've, I've just got to show you because it's terrible. It is terrible. And while we've got, like I said, we've got so many potatoes, the brassicas are doing really, really well. Um, we're gonna have courgettes again. Um, I'm not gonna stress about my onions. It would be really easy to, because I'm a perfectionist as well, and it's just completely gone. And I know it's just like the fat hen weed, so I know I'll just be able to pull them up quite easily. They're one of those weeds that don't cause too much of a problem. And they probably look way worse than what they actually are. But it's awful. It's really awful. Um, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you. Come with me. Right, so I told you it was bad. I didn't lie. So this is my onion pea and bean bed. 
is totally out of control. There are onions in here. Loads of them, actually. But I've got no idea where they are. And this is what happens when you move down the allotment in stages and don't come back to the original one. Which is a big, big sigh. Um, but you know, I thought it'd make you laugh and I thought I'd be honest. The uh, runner beans are trying though, bless them. You may get a few, we've got flowers on there. But everything else doesn't stand a chance, I don't think. So now you've seen how awful that is. It's shocking, isn't it? I don't think I've ever let anything get out of hand like that before. Um, yeah, shocking, pretty shocking. But it's okay. I'll, I will fix it and I will show you what it's like underneath when we get there. There's probably not going to be anything under there. I've sort of had a little bit of a, a rummage and I can't even see any onions under there. But it's my own fault. I shouldn't have got so trigger happy doing the rest of the allotment and abandoned the top end. No one to blame but me. So there we go. So there's your that's next don't. Oh, so yeah. Don't stress if you um, make a mistake. We're all here to make mistakes. You know, we're all human. We're not perfect. And I am a clear proof of that. So yeah, don't. Um, next don't, I would say, is don't water in the middle of the day. Again, it's another one that's really difficult if you have no choice, should you water in the day. I don't know, it swings and roundabouts really. We tend to not water our potatoes much at all and they always seem to do really well. And I think a lot of people go, well, why do you only water your potatoes like every seven to 10 days? And it works for us, it works here. I know the roots of potatoes are brilliant and they will go down and search for moisture as the, the tubers are growing. Uh, but we, yeah, we just tend not to, we're quite good with that. But in terms of other crops that are hungry and they need feeding, especially things in the polytunnel that we will feed with uh, seaweed fertilizer, things like that, we sort of make sure we do them every day or every other day. So yeah, just make sure you don't water in the middle of the day because the water that you put onto your plants will just basically immediately evaporate and the plants are going to be struggling to get all the nutrients from them, get all the water that they need to grow, um, and it's going to be disappearing so quickly. So if an evening water isn't a possibility for you, then see if you can come up really early in the morning before the sun is out. If I'm having a, an allotment day, I would call it, I always do the morning stint. So I get up at sort of six, I try and get up here by seven and have a cup of tea, um, water everything and then sort of give it an hour while I sit and have my breakfast and a cuppa and then by eight o'clock when all this, the water sort of being absorbed by the plants then I start to work but I appreciate that not everyone's fortunate enough to be able to be in that position and I'm only able to be in that position when I'm on holiday so when I can I do like to do the early stint and then obviously it stops me being outside in the middle of the day because I then head home before lunchtime. So I try to get a good sort of four hours in sort of between half seven and half 11. And then I call it a day and I head home before the sun just gets too much. If I get time in the afternoon, I then head home and do some stuff in my garden when it started to cool down a little bit because I've got my garden as well as the allotment. Um, and just, yeah, try and keep on top of everything, which is a nightmare at the moment with the weather being the way it is. But you know me, I'm just so glad the sun is finally here and I'm hoping this is actually summer. Um, someone on Instagram messaged me yesterday and went, well, make the most of it, it's going to be raining by Saturday. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I don't want rain. Um, stay sunny. I love the sun. I love the sun. The bees love the sun. Everybody loves the sun. So yeah, don't water in the middle of the day if you can help it. Don't stress yourself out over the small stuff. It's really, really not worth it. Uh, we have yearly awards at our allotment site. First year, um, we came quite close to winning an award. Um, I was only pipped to the post by my friend on the plot next door. And last year it was obviously cancelled because of COVID. So we didn't get our awards last year. And this year, well, it's just not going to happen. So <laughs> I'm pinning my hopes on next year. Um, 
2022 that's going to be the year of my allotment i'm determined to win an award next year so yeah i'm all itchy i feel like something on me it probably isn't but are there any more don'ts i'm sure there was one more i was going to talk to you about the only other don't I would say is don't compare yourself to others because it's very easy to get caught up when you think, oh my goodness me, the plot over there looks amazing. Oh my God, that plot over there has got this. And oh my God, the plot over there has got that. And mine looks so like this and mine looks so like that. And it's really, really difficult sometimes to compare your, to not compare yourself to others, should I say. Um, but really, really try not to because you know what? everybody's circumstances are different i know that i get a chunk of time off work now um and i've worked solidly for the last few months and there's people's allotments around here that look absolutely gorgeous and in my comparison mine looks awful um but i've been at work constantly for the last three months and a lot of the people around me on the plots, they're retired, so they don't go to work. Or they work part-time, so they can still come up here every day and spend at least a few hours up here. So I try not to beat myself up too much, especially when, one, we've had really rubbish weather. So I've got maybe a two, three hour window after work before I have to get home to have something to eat. And if that two or three hours is chucking it down it's just so frustrating i mean the days i've walked out of my workplace and gone right allotment i can get there in 15 minutes i've been here half an hour and it started raining to the point where you just think this is making me miserable so everybody's circumstances are different every allotment is different and you've just got no idea what everybody else is doing and what they're dealing with in their life the same if you know someone else's allotment doesn't look so great we're really good on our site in that we text each other quite a lot so if I don't know, one of our neighbours isn't doing so well, we can go and check on things and water and my other half quite often mows the lawn to help other people out and the lady a couple of um, allotments down from us, she's let, lent, has, lent us her petrol lawn mower because as you know we do ours by hand and it had got really overgrown so she said oh no help yourself you know I'll tell you when we're bringing it up to the plot and then you can use it and we are, we're a lovely community so don't don't worry about comparing yourself to others. Um, though I would be interested if you have an allotment to know what your community is like. I do tend to read a lot on Facebook and Instagram and there's several groups I'm in, so I couldn't tell you which one it was. Um, and they say that, you know, people are unkind on their allotment sites and they're not necessarily very friendly or forthcoming, which I actually find really sad. I, I feel really fortunate to be in a plot site where everyone does help each other out. Uh, I am definitely, I'm trying to think, probably the youngest plot holder. And I probably work the most as well. So, yeah, I can't think of anyone that's younger than me on the plot. There may be some new um, plot holders. But no, they're great. Everyone on the site is great. We get all our verges mown for us. We're often invited to barbecues at weekends. And no, it's just brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. So don't compare yourselves to others because there's just no point. And it goes back to my other point. Don't stress yourself out about it because it's not worth it. As long as you're happy and as long as you're enjoying your plot and it works for you and it brings you some fulfillment and satisfaction, then that's it, you've nailed it. So yeah, just think of it as your own little bubble and don't worry about anybody else that's outside of it. Um, unless they're offering you cake, then always take the cake. That's my motto. I'm sure I'll be baking lots more courgette and lemon cake to hand out, probably just in time for our next barbecue up here, which would be great. But yeah, I hope you found that useful. Um, it's just been a sort of a chatty video this week. Um, I hope you loved looking at my onion bed because that is just beautiful. Though I have uh, noticed that the runner beans, bless them, they are they are trying. They are trying to grow through up there. So I'm tempted to leave them and just see what happens. And uh, I keep seeing a white uh, cabbage white butterfly flying behind my head. So I'm glad the brassicas are netted because they're getting quite big now. Um, but please go out and enjoy the sunshine wherever you are. Make the most of it, but please stay safe. I'd say it every episode and 
you know, I don't mean it just for COVID reasons. I do mean, please be careful and look out, look after yourselves when you're outside um, because the temperatures at the moment are stifling and it's great. <laughs> you're not gonna, I, I just don't, I struggle when people go, oh, I'm so hot, oh, it's too hot. I'm terrible, I hate cold weather, I hate being cold and miserable. Maybe I'm like a weed. I'm really happy and thrive in the sunshine and get out of control. And then in the winter I die back and I'm a bit miserable. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm a weed. <laughs> but anyway, I'm rambling. I hope you all have a lovely week. I hope you get out into your gardens or up to your allotment and have a really, really lovely time. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. And as always, stay safe, look after each other, and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye, guys.